Like all farms across Britain, the Wadston Estate faces numerous environmental challenges brought on by climate change. Volatile weather patterns impact the soils and farming operations. The warming climate also has its effects on the estate's wildlife, woodland and wider natural environment. Here at Wadston, we are changing the way we work, being a little bit more innovative by um, switching away from conventional farming, starting to work more with nature, implementing those nature-friendly farming techniques such as mob grazing, reducing our inputs to allow us to adapt to the climate change and environmental factors that are happening around us. The estate's environmental schemes provide conservation benefits but also help the farming operation, creating a more resilient environment for cropping. We're currently in a mid-tier countryside stewardship scheme. Predominantly there's buffers around hedgerows and watercourses as well as providing various options for farmland birds and for biodiversity. We use AB1, which is a pollen and nectar mix quite extensively for bumblebee, and we also use AB9, which is an overwinter bird food to try and feed the farmland birds through the hunger gap in January, February. The stewardship adds a really important element for us. If we just look at soil health and we miss the farmland birds, if we miss the wider biodiversity piece on the farm, we're only promoting part of the picture. And to have the healthiest soil going that's dead in terms of your biodiversity, I, I just don't see how that works. And so by supporting the biodiversity with the stewardship plots, that is helping us build the soil organic matter. By having the beneficial insects living in the margins, living in the stewardship plots, they can be moving into my crops, meaning I don't need to spray insecticides. By not spraying insecticides, I'm not damaging the soil health. So it's all connected. The whole picture is connected. It allows me to bluntly be a bit more intelligent in the way that I farm, thinking a lot more about wider crop rotations, different ways of integrating the livestock. A lot of this is work that's been done in the past, but we've sort of forgotten how to do it. So we're learning or relearning all these, all these techniques, but we're doing it now with a lot more technology than we ever had in the past. So there's a huge amount more that we can measure, that we can analyze and that we can react to that, that our grandfathers never had. And I find that really exciting. That really speaks to me. For example, we've introduced an inter-row hoe. That's to try and see, can we just back off slightly with the herbicides and use the inter -row hoe to take up the slack there. Another problem the estate is trying to tackle is black grass, and Ollie is trialling new machinery and technology to reduce the farm's weed burden in a sustainable way. The idea of it is just to skim just under the surface, so we're not doing deep cultivation. It's a very, very shallow cultivation, effectively, and we're just trying to upend the, the black grass expose its roots to the sun so they dry out and the plant dies off. We go through the crop any number of stages, but really before growth stage 31 is about as late as I'd dare push it. Currently on the farm, we are standing still against black grass. This machine, we hope, we think, will give us just a couple of extra percent of control so we can start decreasing the amount of black grass on the farm. To use this machine, it's one operator, one tractor, so it's relatively minimal labour requirements. You can drive it using the RTK guidance, if you've got it, which is accurate to within a centimetre or two, but we've actually found better results driving it by eye. I think that this machine is a great example of where we are trying out a bit of technology without committing a huge amount of resource to it. It's the same approach with arable cropping, with the livestock, with the environmental piece, with the biodiversity net gain we're trying to achieve on the estate. We're looking at what technology we can deploy how we can realistically invest, try it out, see what works, and then when we find something that works, we can jump in with both feet. So the biodiversity on the estate across the board has uplifted, but in particular, we created a new wetland about four years ago, and we now have 124, the last count, different species of birds down there. It's got that designated as a local wildlife site, which is a nod to the Rothschild family themselves, who began the process all those years ago under Charles Rothschild, who lobbied Parliament to create protected places for wildlife. Wadston Estate includes diverse habitats of woodland, wetlands and farmland. By improving biodiversity across the different habitats, the team believe that the estate will be more resilient and prepared for future environmental challenges. Trees, disease, we're not getting those cold, cold winters, which would have held back disease or, or put a stop to things like that. And I think climate change is a real challenge in the weather patterns that we're having. 
I think the woodland itself is a complement to the farmland. It's something that myself and Ollie have discussed in the past in terms of those beneficial insects. They're not going to live on your maize crop or your, your wheat crop. They need somewhere else to live and that will probably be your woodland, but they'll be using that to hibernate in the winter. They'll be using your crops to go out and feed on. In terms of your, your pests that are out there, they'll be going out there. So the woodlands are a vital part of the ecosystem that you need around you to be able to grow good crops. We have a zero insecticide policy here because it is essential that we have insects. We need those for all the other biodiversity that is around. Whether it's the birds feeding on the insects, like the mice feeding on the insects, whether it's the pollinators, it's, you know, it's, it's just a no brainer. Over the last couple of years, Chris has been bringing together local conservation groups to survey the biodiversity and help the estate improve habitats. Volunteers here on this day are absolutely crucial to my job. I couldn't do it without them. These are the guys that are out there at night until two o'clock in the morning collecting data on moths, on their weekends going out and collecting data on birds. Once a month I've got guys that come out and collect data on water samples right across, you know, as part of um, a wider volunteer network. Um, and they're just, they're just absolutely crucial. Chris is partnering with a number of conservation organisations, working with volunteers to understand species across the estate. The overall aim is to boost biodiversity and increase environmental resilience. So that the data that we get from monitoring the owls, uh, so that will be the age of the owls themselves, how far they travel, and also the numbers of chicks in the nest and how successful the year's been. So when we started the project, barn owls across the county were in quite there wasn't very many of them around and because of landowners getting involved with us and sponsoring boxes barn owls have now come off the amber list so it's successful what we do so it's really important to get landowners and farmers on board with what we do and then demonstrate that what it's actually successful and it works see if there's any pellets in the box and there's lots of barn owl pellets here so the data that we get from doing the monitoring is then fed back to the British Trust for Ornithology so we can work out trends. And then we can also demonstrate that by working with landowners and farmers, the success of what we do. We've installed five flight inception traps across the estate. We are now kind of at the end of the season for flying insects. And now we need to get them down, see what we've got and send off results to, uh, to an expert um, to assess what kind of species we have. It's actually really exciting to be a part of what's going on. I think Chris has been wanting to do this for a while, but he's just needed to have the right kind of people to know how to get this off the ground and how to get it happening. So. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, I think we're on the precipice of some good, good results. So it's really useful as a conservation group. We've allowed this corridor of grassland and scrub for reptiles to help breed and be successful along this route. So here we've had one grass snake, which was very successful for this season, and hopefully we'll find more um, the following season. I think other farmers tend to be very interested in what we're doing here, because we are trying it. We are not necessarily leading the way, but we're certainly trying stuff that a lot of people have written off. We've got a really fortunate position on the estate where we aren't cropping to the middle of every hedgerow, we're not having to plough up every corner, we can dedicate areas to biodiversity and we're making a real difference and maybe others will, will see what we're doing, like it and do the same. So there's huge, huge wider implications to what we're trying to do. We have to put back, we have to look after what we've got so that in another hundred years, in another two hundred years, there will still be people here enjoying this estate as I do.